effective use of words in presentations. Words hold immense power, even more than images. What? Look at this photo. What are the words that come to mind? A visit to the beach? A cold beach? Where's the sun? And who are they? And why are they not happy? Ooh, some nice knitted sweaters. But everyone is so white. And each of us have so many more. Isn't that variety of internal thoughts good for a presentation? Yes, it's true that a photograph can be worth a thousand words. But that is actually a horrible thing for a PowerPoint presentation. Your message must be precise and laser purposed. Well chosen words is the tool for precision communication. Hey, this is Les with my behind the scenes commentary. This PowerPoint presentation layout is very specialized with a well timed script. Individually, these slides break presentation design rules, but you've just experienced the effectiveness of text married to a concept of focused words enhanced by a scripted voiceover slideshow. For this specific slide page, I offset the starkness of potentially too many words with PowerPoint animations to bring the bullet points on one at a time as the script matches the concept. Making one slide appear like four slides as we progress through each of the bullet points. Maybe too many words, but more importantly, they are all laser focused on the central theme that words equal precisions. More on upcoming tutorial contents in just a moment. The use of words in PowerPoint is the most powerful tool. And to leverage this power, you need to know all the tools to achieve your goal of precise communication. And PowerPoint has many text based tools to work for you. Yes, yes, there are way too many words on this slide. And the floating bullet point animation does not fix this issue. But the point of this specific slide is not to describe the seven listed tutorial items, but to visually show that there is a collection of many tools to choose from. The emphasis is on the many, with the hope that possibly one or two tools might pique your interest to continue watching. The rest of this tutorial will focus on leveraging all of the text-based PowerPoint tools to maximize your message such as exploring layouts, topography, cool professional tricks to make your presentation effective. So let's power up on the power of text in PowerPoint. Before going further, I am not saying to not use graphics, but instead I want to emphasize that your core tool should be idea based words. And while my other tutorials will cover other graphic techniques, you see here that this class is almost all text based. Let's get to work. And while we are text focused, this slide has an overwhelming number of words. While I could edit out some of the bullet points, let's see some other techniques, starting with the slide layout. Look how the slide is so much better if I split the long list into two sections. And here's how we could do it. The wrong way would be to add in an inserted text box. Why wrong? Because it will not obey the stylistic rules of our design theme with potential wrong font sizes, bullet shapes, and colors. The ideal way is to utilize PowerPoint's built-in workflow tool of layout. Layouts are based on design themes and controls the look and feel of the presentation. And there are dedicated layouts for specific slide needs. Let's look closely. Each of the design styles that we saw moments ago have artistically selected colors, fonts, and a look with a dedicated variations called layout templates. There are templates for title slides, for picture slides, and various text combinations. To see what layout is currently used or to change it, go to the home ribbon menu and use the drop down layout action icon. Here, 
we see that the current slide is assigned to the title and content layout. One title and one text based bullet point placeholder. But if I click to content, I instantly get a matching second text content placeholder to the right. While I could type in my content or cut and paste, I'm going to highlight the bottom half of the list and drag it over to the second placeholder box. All should be good. But if you've made some changes to the fonts or the font sizes before applying the layout, there may be some deviances from the core design theme. Let's compare the fonts in both boxes. On the right side, we have Century Gothic 18 point, but on the left, we've got the same font family, but now two point bigger at 20 point. The best fix for this is to make sure that the slide is conforming to the original layout specification. And to do that, we're gonna reset the slide settings. Go to the home ribbon menu and click reset. Now for a click double check. New right hand text box, 18 point font size. And the left side, 18 points, excellent. Everything is in balance. Let's move on to brutal editing. Just because the slide looks better in two columns as opposed to one long list does not mean it is optimum. Always look to edit out any unnecessary words or ideas. Be laser focused. On closer examination, we do find some unrelated bullet points. The first and last two ideas could be moved to another slide. So let's cut them out. And now, we have all the text-based strategies on the left side and the more graphical elements listed on the right. By removing the excess, we're getting closer to the more targeted slide message. Now, focus with formatting. We can instantly organize our slide with subtle topography enhancements and the use of bullet points. Here, I will indent all the support techniques for text enhancements, highlight and hit the tab key, or as I do here, I'm going to use the indent action icon. And then I'll repeat for the items under graphic enhancements. And to emphasize the category titles even more, I will make it bold, a larger font size, and change the color. And the symbol trick to match the other side is to highlight the desired text look. Find the format painter brush and then click and drag over the target text to get the identical format settings. Here is my underline commentary. We did bold and colorize the heading and I could go back and add underline or italics, but it's a common graphic design rule not to overdo the emphasis. Perform one or two enhancements, but do not throw everything to highlight the target text as it becomes a visual distraction. Look critically. Does the underline actually add anything to this slide? So for the previous slide, we did have to add formatting to the top row. In fact, the top row is really just a mini title for each of the two text boxes. There's a better way. Almost all design themes will have a dedicated layout for two text box comparison slides. Go to Home and the drop down box for Layout and find Comparison. The layout has two side by side bullet text placeholder boxes plus two title headers above each. The beauty of this layout is that the formatting is already applied for both of the placeholder titles. This is even more important and convenient if you have multiple comparison slides in your presentation and you will automatically have a consistent formatting for all the slides. So to review the before and after, we balanced the text with two columns. We removed unrelated bullet points and applied comparison titles. So our long list is now organized and manageable for our audience to better understand. Which brings us to the complex question of how many lines should I have on a single slide? 
it is complex. But a better question is, how many concepts should I have on one slide? That's easy. Just one. Each slide should have a singular goal and message. If it requires just a single set of words, then so be it. And yes, you can add targeted graphics to supplement the single focus concept. Get creative. Sometimes you do have a single goal, but you need multiple bullet points to build to that conclusion. If so, try the slide animation tool like we are on this page with each line appearing as I discuss it and then fades as we move on to the next bullet point. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do this in the next chapter. Another factor is the method of delivery. If you're presenting on a big screen to a room full of people over Zoom or team video conferences, consider using fewer lines to keep people focused and make it easier to read. If you're distributing the presentation in a printout, then you can squeeze much more on a page as people are used to the density of info per page when reading. Lastly, consider the overall density of words on the page. Don't think that a two bullet point slide is just fine if you have paragraph of words for each bullet point. And as promised, here's the chapter, a bullet point animation to get the lines to appear one at a time. Go to the animation tab on the ribbon menu, and there's a trick to make this simple and fast. And that is to make sure you select the text box placeholder and not the inside text. Let's see what I mean by doing it the right way. See how the text box is selected with the eight selector circles at the edge of the placeholder. And now I get to pick my animation of choice. I like the simple but obvious float animation. And with a click, PowerPoint previews the effect with each bullet grouping floating in one at a time. And then we see the animation number next to each grouping showing the order of the floating bullet entrance. In our advanced animation class, you will see how to fine tune this order. But for now, I want to show the common mistake, so I will undo what we just did. Now the wrong method. This time, instead of selecting the text placeholder, I will highlight all the text and then apply the same float animation. Now the text comes up all at once. Wrong. Let me undo this and quickly go back and reapply the animation as we did before, but this time once again, selecting the full text box before applying the float in animation. And sure enough, in the presentation view, the bullet groups advance one at a time, but pretty quickly here as I've sped it up for our tutorial. But in the previous chapter, the lines change color after talking about the topic. This is also easy to add, but only if you know where to look. In the animation menu, I must find the animation pane reveal button on the top right hand corner. This is a critical tool for advanced animation management. Then locate the drop down arrow next to our animated bullet list and find Effect Option. From there, find After Animation and select the color you want it to change to. Click OK and you're good to go. And now, after displaying one bullet grouping and clicking to the next animation, the previous bullet point fades to the chosen color. Very simple and effective in presenting a page with many bullet points. Now let's move on from the slick animation text trick to the annoyance, the mysterious changing font size. Let's examine the font size on this slide with many lines of text. Currently, it's at 19 point. And if I added another line of text, look, the font changed down from 19 to 17. What's happening here? PowerPoint will start to shrink your font size down if you add more lines of text than that will fit in the text placeholder. Microsoft is just trying to be helpful to shrink the text to fit the slide. How to know if this is impacting your slide? Look for the up and down opposing arrow icon on the bottom left of the text placeholder. If it's there, the feature is enabled 
but by clicking the double facing arrows, you can change how it behaves. Watch when I select Stop Fitting Text to Placeholder. And the text goes to the standard layout font size, and in this case, runs off the bottom of the page. If I turn Auto Fit Text to Placeholder back on, it now fits with PowerPoint calculating what font size to use. Mystery solved. But I have more font strangeness. Font length. This is more of a topography quirk, and so Microsoft can't be blamed this time. Font size links will match if using the same font. Okay, technically, this is not 100% true if the font is a proportional font, but that's not my concern now. Look at this slide example. I have three different fonts, Calvary, Corbel, and Bookman Old, and they are all 28 point in size. But now look at the length of each line. Different topography fonts are designed with different dimensions, and so mixing fonts on a slide may give you issues with alignment. So just take note. Font size and readability. When designing a presentation, you should be aware of your target presentation destination and select a font that will be readable, be it on a big conference room projector or in a Zoom meeting. A great idea is to have a sample slide like this to test the room in advance to see which line can be seen at the back of the room. Or look for my tutorial about how to design slides for testing in a projector room with a free download. But this also opens up the topic of how different topography families may be easier to read on a big screen, but offset by the emotion they bring to a presentation. Look as I preview a variety of different font choices and how it changes the character of the slide page. Consider searching for additional training on how to select the right font from a graphic design expert, which I don't pretend to be. No matter what font you do select, you can modify the look by adding enhancements like bold or italic or underline. But there's some bonus less known choices, such as small caps, which you don't see from the shortcut menu. Instead, with the text selected, go to the home ribbon menu and find a font the angle pop-out window icon to get more choices. Here we find multiple options, including the standard all caps, which when selected transforms all the text to capitalization, whether you meant to or not. But my favorite emphasis trick is small caps, which when enabled, all the letters are shown in uppercase, but any letter that had been capitalized will be bigger, taller, which I think adds an emphasis to titles in a classy but subtle way. And talk about subtle, the shadow format may be too subtle. Watch, when I turn it on for just the word advanced, you will have to look very closely to see that there is a black backdrop shadow, which in other color styles might be just what's needed to make it pop off the page. But what if you want to alter the color or the size of the shadow? PowerPoint makes that hard to find, but let's go look for it. Make sure the text is highlighted and get ready. Then find the Shape Format Context Aware menu. Next, click the pop out arrow for Shape Style and now focus over on the right side of the page on the Format Shape pane. We're not done, as the change options are still hidden. So, Look for the text options and then the middle icon. This has to be one of the most hidden menus in PowerPoint. But once there, we're given a wealth of control of the background text shadow. While I will not show every feature, let me demo a few in an exaggerated fashion to make it more obvious. First, I'm going to change the color to red. Remember, I'm exaggerating for emphasis. But to see even more, I'm going to go back and now expand the distance of the shadow away from the host text. Now you can see how to control the appearance of the shadow for a sophisticated text format emphasis. 
This is a very complex technique, but you have now learned about the variety of PowerPoint tools to make your text take center stage in your presentation. From here, you can explore our Power Up Training Graphic PowerPoint videos. But I'd recommend that you continue with the power of words by starting the Mastering of Smart Art, which illustrates your idea-based words into visual workflows. Click and go power up.